What's up guys, it's Dorian from Copper Cravings and today we have a very special video. It's a deck profile done by Mark and Siobhan who recently played in the Luxury Championship Series, uh, the LCS, uh, last weekend. This deck profile is completely done in Dueling Book because of the the world <laughs> and no one can play in real competitive. Um, the whole the whole thing was done on Dueling Book, I believe, as far as I'm aware. They ran a whole tournament. It was like plus 200 players. It was really awesome. Siobhan was a finalist in the thing. I think he got second place. Um, but they detailed the list, everything they their choices, the situations, the matchups, and even going forwards towards the future of like what Yu-Gi-Oh looks like, at least competitive online and with the new master rule. So feel free to listen to that and take a look at what we have next. Uh, if you want anything like this in the future, or if you want to see more deck profiles still, no matter what, even if they're on Dueling Book or even replays, let us know in the comments. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, check it out. Hey guys, this is Siobhan Roy. Uh, this weekend there was a very big online tournament held by uh, uh, Luxury. It was uh, LCS, there was 242 players, and uh, this deck uh, came uh, second place at uh, the tournament. Uh, me and Mark, uh, we worked very hard on this Hello. deck, uh, so he'll be also joining us, um, and we're going to talk about the deck. Yeet. Uh, so, we're going to start with the salad ratios. Um, so, three uh, buffalo, two debug... Uh, three Foxy, two Spinny, two Jaguars, one Falco, one Gazelle. Pretty standard barring like some people like to play three debug, some people like one debug. I think playing two is like correct because it's like five starters, almost the same thing as like giving a. Uh, if you think about like previous formats with like the Orcus deck where they had like five normal summons, mm -hmm. well, five powerful normal summons that you really want to start with, like you also have. Three more with Foxy, but like, in the in the sense you want us norm be normal summoning Foxy or Buffalo. I mean, or Buffalo or Debug to get things done. Right. I I I personally really like Buffalo. It's like the one card that always sticks into the deck first or second, and Debug is like a card that like most of the time needs to get removed going second. Like if it gets negated and removed off the field, and you don't have an extender, it, your turn ends right there. I can be rough sometimes. Um, what are your like? How did you like? It, what are, What are your thoughts on like foul? Uh, I. It's it's an okay card. It's a good level four to, for, to extend for rank four plays. But in the current format, you either have to make your salad deck based on pushing and turboing out of rank four, or sitting on like more preemptive cards. The problem with Salads in general is obviously Nibiru or certain hand traps that prevent you from making the rank 4 plays. Mm -hmm. And if you force your way to committing to that rank 4 and you get nibiru anyways, your rank 4 is dead. So I, opt to, I would opt not to play Foul. Foul is also a very, very subpar card by itself. It, I, I, I definitely agree. I think, I think in, in my opinion, I think Foul has a lot of utility in its own way. Uh, it has a lot of utility that was uh, it was played before in the past and stuff, but like every time you play uh, this deck, you have to very tread carefully, uh, not to step on uh, you know Nibiru territory. And foul kind of encourages that, or it just becomes buffalo fodder, which does nothing in grave afterwards. Yeah, it's not so, like Falco or Jaguar that doesn't something. Exactly, exactly. So like, in like. At, le at least to our preference, uh, Foul's not like mandatory or like needed, but it can be played. It's up to preference, uh, but w we feel like this is the reason like why like I chose to like not to just play that. Yeah, Mark, Mark like heavily convinced me to just not play that. <laughs> like I'm not a huge fan of the card at the current moment. It's a solid card, <laughs> but it's not worth. Moving on to the hand traps, uh, three ash obviously. Um, You're playing a deck full of fires. Yeah, plus it's, it's it behaves like the traps uh, for the salad traps because you can recur them back to your hand. Um, uh, and the reason why you why you play three is not just that is because it generically hits everything. It's, it's just a fact that like 
it's a it's a card that recurs back to your hand like it's recurable resources are really yeah, huge so if you see one there's a high likely chance that you're gonna get it back over time mm -hmm. um like so we also like we also chose to like i i didn't know what kind of decks would be played i just wanted to cover a basis of like two hand traps across the board and uh i think i think mark's list played uh three nibiru's i believe yeah i was playing three nibiru's i like three nibiru's a lot better because uh i i want to see nibiru against most of my matchups mm -hmm. and it encourages my play uh obviously it's not amazing against your back row matchups but like you can and there are also there are also instances where you can imagine or like see a line of play where like some back row decks like such as geist which obviously doesn't really matter but you can see them get to a nibiru point yeah like uh, like it for me i i personally didn't feel comfortable to like i just wanted to cover everything as much as possible but also not draw two of the same hand traps and like it i could see myself like where i would have missed nibiru i could also see myself where i was glad i didn't draw nibiru like it, it varies right uh, but the 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 ratio is the key thing because uh, if you if you put in too many, I feel of like uh, like the, if the hand trap size becomes too large, then it can become a problem, in my opinion. Um, so like we also played like a, so the two ratios would be like the two crows, the two phantasmes, the two nibirus, and uh, the one snake. Uh, it's searchable through three mining, two debugs, and snake itself making it a total of six right and yeah, yeah, yeah that was that was just the uh, hand trap lineup solid card mm -hmm. very solid card i think i think you opted to uh i, I have to side it yeah. i have to side it because i would prefer seeing nibiru over snake mm -hmm. the problem that i had with snake because like i when i first started playing or testing it, it it was crazy i wanted to play three and then i realized cards it's very strong, but it's not that great. Mm -hmm. It's really not that great. I, I was I was actually playing it too for the longest time because uh, it, it was just because of Snake that made me like try and play Salads again. And like, I could have put it on the side, but I, I, I just chose to put it in the main because I saw I saw like the players that were playing and I expected a lot of doll players. <laughs> and I just wanted to have like a little bit of advantage uh, uh, game one. Um... So moving on to the uh, spells. other cards, spells, uh, mining, triple mining, triple desires, triple will, uh, one circle, one sanctuary, and the final spell is Monster Reborn. This card is so underrated. My God, the things you can do with this card is crazy. Uh, one of uh, one of my matches against uh, um, rockets. Rockets. <laughs> Uh, Mark watched the replay for that one. It was crazy. Uh, so, it was it was such a weird situation where I, I got Nibiru and I had the option to reborn my uh, wolf and uh, like do stuff with it a, a little bit, I guess. But instead, I chose to reborn my opponent's uh, bro tar target the token, add my own Nibiru. Already had the ash, and just pass. And then my opponent, he's he's a good friend of mine. He was just like so pissed he's like my god it was it was so great and there's a lot of other cool things you can do with reborn uh you know reborning window reborning thousand eyes it, it, it has a lot of utility especially in the mirror it's really great too um oh the other two hand traps the impermanence these falls into the, the trap category the trap category yeah which brings us to the traps which falls with Two Imperm, two Rage, two Roar, for a total of 42 cards. Yes, I understand that you can make Salamangrates 40 cards and make it the most consistent thing, but I'm also, like, with this list, I also am a fan because I opt, like, I, I opt to play three Desires, which is probably standard by now, but previously it wasn't as standard. Some people would be playing two, some people would be playing like once somewhere don't know where but possibly but three desires I, th I think desires is mandatory because it's it's one of the cards you want to see in your hand it essentially acts as buffalo 
um, it gives you that, it, it increases your consistency no matter what you do. You have the consistency. So Desires allows the deck to be played at 42. And one, like, I, I'm, I bashed Mark for the longest time for playing a, a deck like Salmon Greats at 42. But then after playing the deck myself, I tested both the 40 and 42. And then one day that I just went up to Mark and I said, I understand why you play 42. I, I looked at the deck and I realized there's not a single card that I would like to see in doubles. I don't want to see two spinnies. I don't want to see two buffaloes. I don't want to see two ash. Not two minings. Not two wills. None of that. Even foxy foxy's not. It's so rough. Even buffalo buffalo is so rough. Like, you don't want to see any. Like, not not even your traps, right? Because uh, they're hard once per turn, right? So it's like if you space out all these cards, and ideally you want to look at your hand. I feel, and each one of those uh, cards should be different, in my opinion. And that's when you have an ideal hand. I feel. It also follows this uh, theory that I learned, uh, maybe it was that last year from Nats, um, that it, it's it's not bad if you go above 40, if you can maintain the consistency, because it also spaces out your chances, or it decreases your chances of drawing the bricks that you don't want to see, such as like Sanctuary. Like, I get it, you can open it and it'd be fine, but like, you'd rather not open Sanctuary, obviously. And it spaces out some of the cards so that you don't like end up as Siobhan was saying, draw multiples. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the side, so <laughs> there was so many things. The thing about salads is that it's such a flexible deck. Your options to play side cards or like a hand trap choices are just so huge. It's very hard to decide. So I just chose cards that generically go into like almost like. 80% of the matchups. Um, like, one, I played one Pankertops. Uh, my third Nibiru went in there. Uh, three Dark Ruler. I feel like this is very standard right now, the uh, three Dark Rulers. So, Mark uh, played uh, too evenly in his list, and I was playing too evenly also for the longest time. Uh, uh, I was switching between two and three, actually. But um, I had a discussion with uh, Jesse at uh, Brazil, and uh, he convinced me to play... Uh, uh, lightning storm and for me at, at least for me it was okay <laughs> it was okay that's how i'll label it <laughs> um <laughs> I, I wouldn't put anything beyond that uh would i play it again um not sure because it was okay um still needs more testing obviously, still needs more but... testing because i just threw it in and just flipped out the evenly i would i, I would have had more comments if i just played the evenly i guess um uh, but lightning storm it was okay um, I played uh, two mind control because they're just again just a very generic card, very good. Um, card absurd. Yeah, especially in the mirror, it's just really good in the mirror. Um, two twin. I opted to play two twin because my quote unquote third twin was Pankertops, but Pankertops being more versatile, I played um, uh, triple. Uh, Different uh, dimension drown. Yeah, very, so like it's one of the most powerful cards going first against the relevant matchup. So obviously, like combo and the mirror, obviously, mm -hmm. it, it shines the best in those. Um, I I, th I think I think Mark, you flipped between uh, a pointer DDG and the artifact engine for a little bit, right? Yeah, the the last regional I went to, I played the artifacts. Mm -hmm. I I think I think. I, th I think, like, I I personally took into the account that this is kind of functioning the same way. But, as the artifact. But it's, it, it's less cards, and you can flip them one after another after another. And you don't lose the potential to, like, not use your things. It also lets you not have to, like, take out a desires for your artifact. Right, so, right, right, right. Uh, you don't have to waste an extra card for, like, the scythe. Mm -hmm. Which comes to the final side card, which is Imperial Order. It basically takes up the same four slots as the artifact engine. Right. Well, I, I think, like, I was maining that for the longest time, and I think you still are, right? I, I still am. Yeah, like, I, I was maining that for the longest time, and I just wanted to make, uh, put in two more hand traps. So I cut the, I put the order into the side, I cut the second snake uh, completely and put in the 2DD crow. Um, uh, I wish I could play a better hand trap that is different from what I'm already playing over the DD crow. But currently, as it stands, uh, me and Bar Mark both came to the conclusion that there is currently nothing better. Um, so uh, that's that for the side. Uh, DDG also does not 
hinder, you should not be worried about banishing your own cards because as long as you have a bail, you're protected. If they try to out your monster, they're also negging you themselves because they have to play into the DDG. Um, so the extra, <clears throat> uh, obviously this part's pretty standard right now. Uh, three bail, three wolf, two Leo, obviously the Phoenix. I don't know why some people also, there was apparently a discussion about cutting Hita for some reason. Really? <laughs> I've never heard, I've I, never I like, cut these cards. <laughs> someone was, I was like, you're crazy, That that's not happening. Oh my god. Um, the package update jammer and, uh, transcode. Empty board, simple OTK, 81 damage, 81... Yeah, uh, uh, debug, as people should know this by now with Salad, debug is a one-card OTK through an open board. Mm -hmm. it is, this this card is insane. Like, the, the combination of these two is, is just insane. And, and the fact that the transcode can bring back Wolf, make it, like, untargetable, give it, like, tw a 5 minute attack boost, like, it's huge. Like, it, it makes it's, things it's a harder. Lot of things, um, something uh, a lot of people underestimate the utility that update provides mm -hmm. there was a match that you showed me the replay where um i believe it was against your top 16 matchup uh yeah, yeah, yeah. his the opponent game. <laughs> forced the uh, forced his ip oh my into God. a phoenix yeah. co-linked to your transcode talker so Oof. that it gained attack and it would die and mm -hmm. then you used the transcode to negate his phoenix during damage that damage calc and then yeah that, that was that was huge that was and then he huge. took a thousand from yeah. it and then it was very clean so, it was a really nice play <laughs> so one of the things that mark taught me <laughs> uh for the longest time i uh I, I was just abusing jammer to like get the double attack and this card is mvp against uh dolls like uh every anytime they set a card you just prevent them from triggering any effects through just update alone. It, that that card puts on so much pressure, it's insane. As long as they're not uh, progressing their game state, and you can hinder that with just update. <clears throat> Transcode is obvious. It's very cool for the climbing plays. It it lets you set up nicely. Uh, it's a recurrable link. It's a rec uh, it recurs not just link any of your wolves and stuff. You can bring back Leo if you really wanted to. Uh, and, and then move to... This is the part of the extra deck which is like solely flex spots. I think update and transcode should be mandatory in a salad deck. You could change it if you want to, but I think those are mandatory. These are the like flex spots within this deck, which is we opted for two link fours and one rank four. Some people like to play Baguska, and I understand the reasoning behind that. I just don't see a realm where I can play two rank fours consistently. We took two link fours over the uh, two rank fours, right? Yes. So I, I was telling Mark like, oh, maybe we should try um, uh, zero boros because everybody's playing zero boros, right? But um, over over testing, Mark told me to keep trying uh, Avermax, and I realized Avermax is just I I, I personally think it's it's. Uh, easier to make at an earlier stage whereas uh zero you have to make it in such a game state where once you drop that card your opponent has to play into the zero boros and then pass but 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 if your opponent somehow manages to bait your zero boros have it banished and you're left with an empty board and if they have follow-up you lose uh, like it's it's really it's it's like you won't, you have to make it in a very particular game state. And whereas Avermax, you can make it at any point, and feel safe. Avermax has like four effects or three effects or something. It's it does a lot for a singular card. Um, the other one was Borload. I think Borload is mandatory. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of the two link fours over the two rank fours because uh, you can it it gives you a better grind game with Salts. And everyone knows Salad's the deck that l it's very consistent at grinding all matches. Uh, being able to make a Avermax or Borload, and if your opponent, not saying that it should be, it should get to that game state, but if there is a game state where your Borload gets cracked, a Baguska will not help you. Mm -hmm. Whereas Avermax is a follow up to that, which could potentially crack the boards, or vice versa if you choose to make the Avermax first and then go for the Borload. 
Uh, also, another thing to note is that uh, Don't... because foul was not played, it also encourages encouraged the decision to not play Baguska. Another huge thing to note is that there was no Appaloosa in this list. Mm -hmm. um, That's huge too, yeah. Currently, as it stands, the only decks that can truly like that could truly take advantage of Appaloosa were decks that could like make huge boards. An Appaloosa on its own is not very threatening in the format. Just not. It's, yeah. It's too easy to break. It is actually too easy to break. In in, in theory, like, quote unquote, sure, an Appaloosa could have like three negates, but in reality, it actually has like one to two negates because the moment the monster drops under a certain attack range, it can be swung over. So that last negate is actually irrelevant. So whatever number of negates it actually has, you should subtract it by at least one to two depending on what they summon. Like, Abelus is very easy to bait. Like, sure, they killed their battle phase, but you just lost two negates because... Uh, but uh, It's not worth it. No, definitely not worth it. Overall, the deck performed very well. Like, very, very consistently. And I was very satisfied with how it performed based on the replays I saw, how things turned out. It was, it was very consistent, and it performed... The, the, the cards meshed well together. And there was no point in time where it could have been, oh, if we played less cards, oh, if we played this instead. Everything worked consistently with each other. And the pilot, as Siobhan Roy did well, second place, shows the, the deck. The deck did well. The deck did very well. Um, I have a question. So I'm pretty sure uh, the viewers and listeners, they want to know, like, uh, it's great now that this deck functioned well um, in the tournament, uh, but uh, within the, like by the time I'm pretty sure a lot of people see this, uh, they'll want to know how can this deck function or what should be changed moving into the new master rule, moving into the new ban list, uh, what moderations would you make or not make? Um, so, with every new ban list, based on how I would see salads or a deck I'm trying to play is, I would go back and revisit every option that I have at my disposal. And the first one that came to mind is obviously the rank four utility. Mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the upcoming master rule, there's also things like summoning in the main monster zone now, which begs the question, is Baguska worth it? Mm -hmm. uh, how many hand traps should I dedicate to this format? Because, you know, things like Phantasmi come into consideration based on how how many decks that we see applying with the new rule changes. Right, right. Um, one I, thing I think I, links will still be relevant. I definitely think links mm -hmm. will be still relevant. Uh, regardless of what happens, uh, Phantasmies could still be mained. Mm -hmm. I, I genuinely believe that. Um, my... I, something I've been considering for a while is Ghost Bell over Crows. Just because um, it, it has a slight bit more coverage, whereas because of now decks like Spiral, which are not in the format anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I can use Bell to cover dolls. I can use Bell to cover um, possibly rockets if I wanted, but... I feel like the thing with the salads is like that it's a lot like striker where it Very needs a, adaptable. yeah it it needs a little bit of a breathing time before it like sees the meta and then jumps back in yeah or or if they have a grasp on it then they can move forward with it mm -hmm. but overall you could potentially take the same list and head into just to get a a fundamental understanding of the format then you can change things accordingly mm -hmm. so we'll see what's up in the next coming week or two and probably come back to you with a deck profile all right guys uh thank you for listening uh that's it take care guys bye bye